What's going on, brothers and sisters? This is Professor Spira here to do a very interesting case study on one Nikocado Avocado. And for those of you that might not know who I am, I am Professor Spira. I've practiced something called the mucusless diet healing system for over 18 years and I've helped thousands, thousands of people learn how to properly transition their bodies and their diets in a way where they're able to sustain it and they don't fall off strange wagons uh, constantly and yo-yo back and forth. And, you know, the Mucus of Diet Healing System has saved my life and has saved the lives of many, many people. You know, I lost over 100 pounds, overcame a number of ailments, including <clears throat> uh, getting off of pharmaceutical medications for allergies and uh, had chronic bronchitis all the time, just a number of different problems. And so with mucusfreelife.com is the website and we uh, have a number of books in honor of Professor Arnold Eret, who wrote the uh, Mucus's Diet healing system which is really the book that started it all when you're talking about raw foodism when you're talking about naturopathy and modern concepts around that just totally transformed and changed the game and unfortunately a lot of people don't know who professor arnold Eret was and his methodologies yet they participate in modalities where he was one of the founding fathers, but he's not really give, been given his credit. And to the disservice of many people, including Nick Akato and a lot of other folks, that I think if they would have had access from the beginning to Professor Arnold Eret's information and they would have been able to be open to it and actually deal with the information in there that there could be a huge difference in terms of the outcome and this phenomenon that we're seeing where people are being raw vegan or trying to be fruitarian and doing it for one or two or three years and all of a sudden you see a YouTube video go up talking about we <laughs> You know, I'm, I'm no longer vegan. I, veganism is terrible and you can't do it. And I'm eating raw meat now. Or I'm, as we're gonna explore today, I am, you know, muck, muck banging. And, uh, <laughs> you know, and so, uh, so let's get into this first. I wanna say hi to everybody that is on here. I'm gonna bring up the uh let me bring up the chat real quick give me a moment and there we go just to just to let you know that this this is live i didn't i'm not trying to trick anybody i didn't pre <laughs> pre do this and so i want to say what's up to everybody appreciate everybody that's on here uh, we're gonna have have some fun and at the same time really hope that the we can learn a lot. a lot. There's a lot of wisdom to be learned today. There's a lot of lessons that can be learned in terms of the magic word today is transition. Transition. If, if, you're, if you're by the chat, type transition in for me. I just, just want to see this. Type, type the word transition in to the chat because that is the magic, magic word. And we're gonna see what happens when transition goes wrong or when transition is totally ignored and not understood, not dealt with on any level at all. So, uh, and before we get started, if you're new here and you've never heard of the Mucus Diet Healing System, you want to check this information out. And I've created a, a few PDFs to get you introduced to the Mucus Diet. 
Go down below, click the link, you get five free recipes, help you begin to learn what kind of combinations are mucus free, foods that do not create mucus and leave behind slimy waste in the body and ultimately help you cleanse this stuff out of the body, a perpetual uh, cleansing process. So if, you've, if you don't, you've never seen this before, you're brand new, you haven't signed up yet, go down there, click, sign up and get your free gifts and get started learning about the mucus diet healing system and how it might be able to transform your life. Maybe you're already you know, you've been raw vegan for a while or you aspire to be fruitarian, but it's hard. You're, no, you're starting to notice things, as did Nick Akato, that he wasn't, started not feeling good doing what he was doing. And because he didn't have access to this, or didn't, he had access to it, but he didn't check it out, he <clears throat> will <laughs> we'll see the extreme transition that he went into. There's other case studies we can do of people getting into the carnivore uh, thing, eating, going from, you know, 40 day juice fast, and then all of a sudden they're getting into eating raw hor uh, horse and whatever it is they're eating, raw buffalo and that kind of stuff. We want to avoid, <laughs> you know, all that. We want to avoid all of the insanity. And so let's, uh, let's, let's go on ahead and get into this a little bit. So the uh, person in question today, one Nikocado Avocado. Now, I remember him before he became a, a, a YouTube celebrity and a lot of people knew who he was, that kind of stuff. He was a someone getting into raw veganism and a blogger. Now, I don't remember which group this was in, because back then I, I was in a lot of different groups trying to, you know, <laughs> eat, show people the mucus's diet, but I had to be crafty about it because people would just reject it immediately. So I had to, you know, I was in these little Facebook groups trying to share things that related to what people were talking about and that kind of stuff. And I remember he would often share his videos in there and it, the vlogs of his journey and eat, eating a lot of vegetables and that kind of thing. But it seemed like there was, he either wrote a story or he said, a, said some story where he was going through something it, and he wasn't feeling good or s something was wrong. And I'd been watching what he's eating in these videos and I even told people, I like, man, this dude is not going to make it because he has absolutely no concept of transition. And in the, in the comment section on one of these, I wrote to him like, like, Hey man, you know, I like you're doing these videos. That's cool. I would highly encourage you to check out the mucusless diet healing system by professor Arnold Eret and read the transition diet lessons. Because the things that you're dealing with and the problems that you're having are not going to go away and you need to open yourself up to a transition methodology, not try to be so strict, not try to be so, I mean, he was kind of the textbook raw foodism that, that, that kind of real narrow minded, 100%, like it's got to be 100% raw, doesn't matter if it's mucus forming or not. Just that, that was where he was at. And there was a lot of other people that's in his, that I was dealing with that was in his situation. The main difference was he was getting a following on YouTube and a lot of these other people weren't. And so people were kind of invested in his story because they had tried to plug into him. So let's, uh, let's, let's start off with just sort of, I'm gonna, just a few seconds of this this video he posted up or I guess it was him that posted up a video that was kind of the before and after and there's a lot of instances where he's trolling it's obvious he's trolling but at the at the same time it's like a simultaneous trolling 
and cry for help. And it keeps you like, well, is he just messing around with this? Or is he, is it a cry for help? Or is it, <laughs> or is it both? So, uh, so let's take a look and you can just kind of see the juxtaposition here and we can get a little deeper into this analysis. <laughs> I ate five avocados for dinner tonight. The vitamins and minerals will feed my hair, my skin, my brain, and my blood. Now right there, you've heard me talk about this before. There was a reason, like I'm known as the anti avocado guy, which I, I shouldn't be. I have the occasional avocado. It's not the end of the world. When I made a video, that's one of my most popular videos back in 2012 or 13 or whenever it was, uh, and number, the number one on the list of the worst mucus forming foods that people think are healthy, I put avocado as number one on the list. Why? Because of this. Because of this, these people, these folks, maybe some of you, that, because that was totally irrational. And people wanted to try, they wanted to burn me at the stake for saying avocados are not healthy. I didn't tell you not to, just not to eat them. You, you can use them as a transition. No, no it's cool. But this was what was happening, where people were getting into this, it, it was this kind of extremism of, you know, 30 bananas, and he's about, we'll, we'll get to that, he's about to try to do that again, maybe, the 30 bananas a day kind of vibration, but th 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 this is what we're dealing with, the, 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 uh, the extremism, and we would, people would try to connect us to that, and I'm saying, did you read the book? It's the, it's the opposite of that. It's, it's not extreme. If you really deal with the principles and you don't try to bring in all of these other concepts and all of this stuff, it is the middle path in the plant-based world, mucus's diet healing system. So five, and this was, he would talk about he would eat five, avocados in one sitting, and that's a meal. Not a salad there, as with the mucus's diet methodology. If you're going to have a mucus forming item, which your avocado is mucus forming, I'm sorry, if you're going to have an item like that, at least have it with a salad, a broom salad, something that's going to move through and not allow a bunch of slime residue to build up. All right. I ate five avocados for dinner tonight. The vitamins and minerals will feed my hair, my skin, my brain, and my blood. You are what you eat. So whenever possible, eat from the earth and you will feel alive. I have eaten more avocados than any other person on earth that I know of. If every ounce of fat you ate was the fat you wear, I don't think I'd look like this. Turkey baster, up in here. Turkey baster, up in here. Fruit will not make you fat, all right? I'm really trying to blow this myth into the water. Why am I getting fat? Okay, <laughs> so and first and foremost, I wanna say I, I'm not here to just unload and bash the dude you know, he's made this whole, this public and he's obviously, he's making fun of himself with it and it, he's, he doesn't appear to care in, in terms of that. So I'm not here to just be bashing him and that, that's not the purpose of this. Now I'm going to laugh at stuff that's ridiculous and I'm going to call out stuff that's ridiculous, but the, it's, it's all, <laughs> it's, uh, it's constructive. This is <laughs> this is constructive analysis and criticism because there's I know there's other people that's in his situation that's getting lured in by the the kind of the extremist lustfulness. There's just certain people that are wired, and I understand that because I, I empathize with the extremist mentality. Believe me, and I've had to learn to. B, it's like all the virtues I talk about with the mucus diet, the virtues of patience, 
the virtues like you, if you are an extremist mentality, that doesn't mean that you're a lost cause. You have to teach yourself these virtues. You have to teach yourself to be calm. You have to teach yourself, let go. All of the, you know, let go of the ego. Let go of the wanting immediate gratification. Wanting to be at the top. Because I always get those questions like, well, how long does it take to become mucus-free? How long is the transition? This isn't a race. This isn't about, a, this isn't a competition. This is about reconstructing humanity. It's not a competition in that. This is about collaboration. We got to be think. it's a paradigm shift from the competition men mentality to the collaboration mentality. We got to work together. But that thing that people get into talking about, oh, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be mucus free. And I don't have to go as long as that. I can do it now. And, and, and then they end up like this. <laughs> and so I have this going around and <clears throat> B-roll in the back as I, as I discuss. So... Get a little further. So what he ended up doing is, as he noticed, you know, he still wanted to keep eating and doing things on camera for, for his fans, and he got into what's called uh, muck muck bang. And let's get a good definition, or at least a Wikipedia level definition, muck bang. Also known as an eating show, is an online audiovisual broadcast in which a host consumes large quantities of food while interacting with the audience. It became popular in South Korea in 2010, and since then it has become a worldwide trend. Varieties of foods, ranging from pizza to noodles, are consumed in front of a camera. So what what he did is he started getting into this mukbang. I think that people credit him with being one of the first people in the United States that really got famous and follow you know a bunch of followers. He's got like three different YouTube channels. Like this one has over two million followers. The other ones have like five hundred thousand, three hundred thousand followers, and he actively posts to all of them and. And there's a number of different things that you know, other people have talked about. Different, you know, men, the mental illness side, and there's you can find different videos of people referring to that and that kind of stuff. And and it's always this thing of well, what's trolling and what's real. Now, what's real is he's really eating this stuff and he's really going through and putting all this this weight on and that kind of thing. But and then he did a. There was a video where he did. I think he had a heart attack or something. He had a heart attack and he talked about it in a video, like where he had. He said his arm all of a sudden couldn't feel anything and that. So next, just to go go back. Stop looking at him. Uh, do this. So if we go back here. The, so he's doing videos now that's teasing going back to veganism because he wants to, I guess, not have heart attacks as much. And, but the problem is, and I don't know which, which one of these videos, but one of the videos, he basically said he was going to do several days eating nothing but banana, like 34 bananas a day, going right back into the same mess that put him in this situation, that 80-10-10, raw till four type of mentality that breeds this because the focus is wrong. And, and we'll get a little bit deeper into what I'm talking about there in, in a moment. Now, of course, the, for the, to draw people in, people like to see him cry. And so there's a, a lot of the videos where he, he's, he's crying and... Uh, and again, you know, is that showmanship <laughs> or is it real? You, you know, you, who knows? But 
it it is what it is. But I mean, you know, I, I do feel for the dude, and it's it's a rough situation where now now he's making he's making all this money. He's a you know, I guess a mil, probably millionaire now after all all the views and the success here, but he would have to reinvent himself again to try to maintain, you know, or do something else. But his situation, if he doesn't make a change, I mean, physiologically, there are laws that govern what's happening with the body and without, you know, get, getting into this insane amount of, of food. So let's look at some of these thumbnails and we can, you can just get a sense of what is going on here. I don't know what what's this hot Cheetos. He's obsessed with this hot Cheetos thing. Like making all kinds of hot Cheetos stuff. <sighs> Okay, so when I talk about pus and mucus culture, pus and mucus society, in a, in a pus and mucus world, <laughs> in a pus and mucus based society and culture, this, somebody killing themselves, eating just pure garbage gets 2 million, 2.12 million subscribers. Pus and mucus culture. If you don't see the world through that filter and when you go down the street and you see the billboards and all the commercials and the McDonald's and the Taco Hell, like if you don't see the world like that, if you don't understand that you are inside of something that's built on pure madness, behavior, connection between behavior and what you eat, there's not enough focus on that because the people that would need to focus on that are eating the stuff that they shouldn't be. That is turning humans into the lowliest of low animals. And so, but this is what gets attention. This is what gets elevated. And, and, that, and, the, and, it's, and it's on both sides, the extremism. If somebody comes out and they're doing a, a two years on juice, they're going to get a lot of, of viewers and subscribers. People don't like the middle because the middle isn't as sexy. It's not as exciting to just stay the course for 20 years, for 30 years, for 40 years. Just stay the course and improve a little bit every day. Improve every day a little bit. No, people want to try to skip over the work and... And, and go right into whatever they think they should be in their head. And sometimes it's based on ego because they'll start looking at what other people have done, especially this, all, this happens a lot in the fasting area where people put out videos talking about, I just did a 20-day fast, I did a 40-day fast, like blah, blah. Then there's these other people that are looking and they're like, well, if so-and-so could do that, I can do it too. And it's like this ego trip. That's not, you should never fast just because you saw somebody else fasting. You should fast because your body is telling you that that's what it needs. Or if you can't hear your body yet, then you deal with the, with the methodologies. And, and you deal with the fasting methodologies and the transition diet methodologies and you go, uh, you know, go the course that way and until you reconnect with yourself and you can hear what your body is actually telling you it wants. So, wow. <laughs> just, 
just a, a moment here of, uh, I don't know, I feel like I, I need some, I need something, I need some. So what we're gonna do, this is gonna be the first, and this might be the last. Professor Spira is going to have the mukbang moment. So we're going to do <laughs> the mucus-free mukbang right now. It's gonna be a short one. So, so here, here we go. I got some organic grape juice. And are we supposed to talk? So yeah, yeah, that was, the world is on fire and it, you know, yeah. so how are you doing? Was that, was that fun? Was that, is that what that is? That, millions and billions of views all over the world of different people just eating and talking. I don't even know why I'm surprised. Why am I even surprised at anything produced by pus and mucusdom? Why? But I'm still, I still get, I still get surprised. Every once, every once in a while, they get me. So here's, this was five months ago where he said he's gonna go vegan again, and this might have been the video where he brought out the. Is this where he? Yeah, here we go. Or he, he, and again, maybe he's trolling us, but he's basically saying he's gonna go back, go back to. And like I said, it maybe he's just this is a joke, and he's trolling, or that's still the mentality. It's still going from one extreme to the other, instead of down the middle, transition, transition, transition. So let's take a moment. Oh, wait, you can't. <laughs> My bad, you can't see it. Sorry. This is what I'm talking about. <clears throat> Where he's got all these, uh, he brought all the bananas out here talking about, you know. So I think that's, you know, the, the old 80, 10, 10, 30 bananas a day type of thing. And I was very prophetic and I didn't want to be right, but. Years ago, I, I warned everybody. People hated me in the old raw foods, like a lot of folks. Until they needed my help, they hated me because I was always this voice in the corner saying, you know, it's okay not to be 100% raw. It's okay to, to transition. It's okay. And then there's, ah, sh sh don't listen to him. We don't like him. Then what do they do? They invented something that basically was like a transition diet. Raw till four, they just pulled that out of the air. So we're, so we're still raw until four o'clock. And then we can eat all kinds of cooked, mucus-forming, plant-based foods that we want. And if you watch that, it's like that, the whole raw thing literally transitioned downward and degenerated into and we, me and uh, Steve Prusak talked about this in our interview several weeks ago, and he was at the forefront of all that, really dealing with a lot of the folks in the raw world. And some of the main people were going from staunch plant based rawism to starting to eat carnivore, like raw meat. Like, what? So it's like raw is law. Raw by any means necessary is the mentality. And I've always hated that. And I've always fought against that. You know, trying to do it in a loving way, in a, in a constructive way that just doesn't go and just cuss a bunch of people out for being stupid. And so I tried to just, you know, like, well, hey, because what I ended up having to do is, is plant the seeds because I knew it wouldn't work, so I would plant the seeds and say, hey, well, you know, good, good job, buddy, but if you ever 
want to take it a little slower or if you ever find that you start having incredibly uncomfortable symptoms and things aren't going your way, check us out. <laughs> you know, to, to, don't go all the way back to, you know, to, to Popeye's chicken land. Let's come to the middle path. Come to the middle way. Let's, let's deal with that. And a lot of people did, and I'm happy they did, and a lot of did end up benefiting from dealing with that middle way. But it's very, I've just seen it's very hard for folks that have been stuck in that mentality to break free of that because it's so, that particular dogma is, is a, it's, a, it's a rough one to get through because people grab on a hold of it and you know it it's like it hurts to let it go and it's like no don't don't let it don't let that go where that middle path is like look we're focused on removing obstructions from the body transforming your body and your diet over time permanently making permanent changes if you transition properly you will make it impossible to go back to certain things at least without transitioning back there's no way that I could eat like, like, some, like fish or something. I mean, that, I, would, I would rather drink a thing of bleach. But uh, physiologically, it would probably, it could very much kill me. If not, it'd make me ill. I'd be sick for months, but it could kill me. Especially if I, if I hadn't been eating a whole lot of, of mucus-forming stuff, it'd take me out. Now, I, it wouldn't have taken me out the first month of practicing the mucosa diet or the first several months of practicing it. I, trans, I transitioned and transformed my body over time. And that's what happened. So I want to read an excerpt from Mucosa Diet Healing System. This is uh, Confusion and Dietetics Part 2. And there's a section on raw food diets. So I'm going to get real close here, try to make it big enough for you to see. And I will read the, uh, the paperback version. Here in Eric says, at present, among the vegetarian health seekers, quote, raw food diet is in fashion. No doubt it represents great progress, but the arguments are partly wrong and lead to mistaken and fanatic extremes. They claim all cooking destroys food values, but it should be said properly, quote, wrong cooking destroys healing value qualities and efficiency of foods and can even cause them to become acid forming. The quote, raw food experts hint on the same wrong stress as all others. That is the higher food value in other words, nutrition concepts. Every, when it, where it says higher food values or food values, that is nutrition concepts, which leads to much of the problems of the 801010s, of the that entire raw food aside. He nailed this in 1920, it hasn't changed. The entire effect or benefit from raw food is the rough fiber of uncooked vegetables, which relieves constipation and acts as an ideal mucus broom in the intestines. I do not believe that the human body assimilates food value vegetables, such as cauliflower, asparagus, turnips, potatoes, or from uncooked cereals. After a certain beneficial mechanical cleansing of the bowels through the raw foods, the one-sided raw food eater lacks, in fact, the most important substance, and that is grape or fruit sugar, unless they eat enough fruits. And let's get down here. What significant <clears throat> and instructive is the experiment. Put a lemon in a moderate dry heat for a few minutes and it becomes sweet like an orange. You develop grape sugar, but let it bake a little too long or if it's uh, cooked, it becomes bitter. 
On the same principle, all vegetables, when baked, improve by developing the more or less starch they contain into grape sugar. This is true of carrots, beets, turnips, cauliflower, etc. Raw fruits. Now this is important. Listen. Listen. Raw fruits and if desired, raw green leafy vegetables form the ideal food for humans. Most people stop there. Many people that read the book, that's all they see is that first sentence. Raw fruits and if desired, raw green leafy vegetables form the ideal food for humans. That is the mucusless diet. But the mucusless diet as a healing system uses raw, rough vegetables for their cleansing qualities, baked ones as food, and baked and stewed fruits as a less aggressive dissolver of poisons and mucus to moderate the elimination in severe cases. That is one of the most important principles of the system, a point the raw food fanatic ignores entirely. Eating raw potatoes, raw cereal, and unfired pies is, in my opinion, absurd and worse than if they are carefully baked, which means developed the starch into at least partly digestible gluten and grape sugar. So many people say that Professor Arnold Eric. You, know, you say his name, then like, oh, are, are you raw? Are you 100% raw? Are you raw foodist? He just trashes that, that whole mentality. He's not saying to not eventually transition to be raw, but you, would be, you better be mucus free. By the time you become raw, you better be 100% mucus free where you've already dealt with all the mucus, once you get to that raw level, you're just, you're, you're cruising. But that's not what most people do. And what ends up happening, a lot of the raw food is, they get into this, they might start off kind of raw and mucus free for a while, but it doesn't take long where a huge portions of their diet are based on the, and sort of centered around the mucus forming items. So let's consider fat, because that's kind of the big thing. Well, maybe before I do that, there I, I did have a note here. Let's look at note 62. The raw food diet or raw vegan diet refers to the practice of consuming uncooked, unprocessed, plant-based, and often organic food as a large percentage of one's diet. In practice, some raw food is find it acceptable to frequently use blenders, food processors, juicers, and dehydrators, although other practitioners view these as forms of processing and avoid them. Some will also periodically eat cooked foods or mucus-forming raw foods, and the term vegan was coined by Donna Watson in 1944 to draw a distinction between a person who abstains from all animal products, including eggs, cheese, fish, etc., from vegetarians, who avoid eating meat but still consume certain animal products. Once all non-plant-based items are eliminated, the mucus diet becomes by definition vegan, yet many, food, uh, uh, yet many foods thought to be acceptable in veganism and raw foodism should be avoided or systematically transitioned away from when practicing the mucus diet healing system. I'm not going to get into the vegan debate at this moment. If you want to, there's, I got a... Uh, uh, find the article on mucusfreelife.com, uh, uh, Mucus Free, the Original Vegan Diet. There's a whole history where we put Arnold Eretz's work into that history of veganism. And I already, I know people say, well, vegan, it's all about the animals. Look, we're, we don't, we're not going to have that debate in this one. <laughs> not this video. It's, 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 not, it's not the time. So plant-based, vegan, whatever these words, I mean, they're not that, not that important. They're just to get you in the door. You know what I mean? They just, just to kind of get, get it happening. But the difference here like with the mucus diet, we call ourselves practitioners. You practice a mucus-free diet. 
When you practice something, that means that you're not there 100%. You don't have to be. That type of pressure isn't on you. We, there's not a pressure to be 100% mucus-free. Nobody is going to lambaste you and make videos tearing you down because you ate some mucus-forming foods. That's built into the system, into the transition diet. You're supposed to eat some mucus-forming foods as a part of the healing system to get it out of your system, to get beyond worst mucus-forming foods. So let's look at the fats question According to Arnold Eric, all fats are acid forming, even those of vegetable origin. Let me say it like 20 more times. All fats are acid forming, even those of vegetable origin and are not used by the body. You will like, crave, and use them only as long as you still see mucus in the magic mirror, which is the tongue. What doctors call heat calories is uh, caused by the fats in friction, obstruction in the circulation. They constipate the small blood vessels. Let me take a look at what I had to say. And by the way, so these notes in this is the annotated, revised, and edited edition of the Mucus Diet. And I created notes, that annotations that are at the ends of the chapters and he says, as mentioned earlier, many readers assume that avocados are mucus free because they are technically a fruit. Although avocados are not addressed specifically by Eret, as they did not become prevalent salad items until the 1950s, Eret clearly indicates that all fat containing foods, including those of vegetable origin, are mucus forming. Avocados have become a staple food for. Uh, many self-identified raw foodists, vegans, and fruitarians. From the perspective of the mucus's diet, it is important to be mindful of how much you eat fatty fruits or avoid them completely. If they are being eaten, it is best to begin mindfully transitioning off of them. And so th this is where it, it, it gets tough to, to, for people because it's like, we're not saying that you get rid of it totally. That's not the point. The point is to, un to understand that it's not optimal and that it's not something that you want to eat every day for the rest of your life. And that's the point. And sometime soon I'm going to do a video, what I eat in a day on the mucusless diet. And I'm going to show you how my personal diet has changed over the years. I'm going to try to show you the trajectory over, ye over time, over 18 years of how years one through three, I was eating things, there was things years one through three that I was eating that I was no longer eating in years five through 10. There's things in year five through 10 that I was eating that I was no longer eating in years 10 through 15. And there were things that I was eating five years ago that I no longer eat today. Consistent transition over time with permanent changes and no rushing. I know it's hard. It's, just, it's like it seems impossible for some people to not, do, to, to not fall into the trap of wanting to just go so fast and and just skip over this entire process, transition diet, so important. Now, while we're on the subject of mukbang and you know putting all this stuff in there, we got to take a look at the meats. So all meats are in a decomposing state, producing cadaver poisons, uric acid in the body, and mucus. Fats are the worst. Even butter is unusable for the human body. No animals eat fat. People are going to say, well, animals, yeah, they eat. If you just have a big, if you killed an animal and you just took all of its fat and you just set it there and you put it in the tiger cage, maybe I'm wrong, but I really don't think the tigers are just going to go and just start eating that fat. Now, if the fat is, if there's, if there's fat and meat, then yeah, the, it's eating everything, but it's also eating the feces. So if you want to be a carnivore, and you're, if you want to be a carnivore and you're not eating the feces of the animal that you are eating, then you're not doing it right. 
because the animals go for the gut. And I got a video of it, but I'm not going to get it now as it's buried somewhere. The, the animals, that first thing they do is go for the gut, which when they're eating herbivores, what is that? It's, it's almost as if the tigers let the, <laughs> let the herbivore eat it, partially digest the plant substance, and then now it's going for the gut. Eats that partially digested plant substance. Gets in them intestines. And uh, in that video, I got the, it's, <laughs> this tiger, I mean, it's just sitting there licking this feces right out of the animal, just, ah, you know. And so, if you want to be a carnivore, like I said, do what you want to do. I just, I just, I just want to help you. I want to help you be the best that you can be. If you want to, if you want to be the best carnivore, you got to eat the feces. Don't skimp on the feces eating of the animal. And it's got to be that it's the feces from the animal that you're eating. Don't get some other feces from some other animal and try to combine that with the, with the meat. That's, that's not how it's done. You've got to have the feces from the animal that you killed with your canine teeth. You jumped on the back of the animal. You jumped on the back of the cow. You sunk your huge canine teeth into its neck, killed it, and then you can partake of the feces and the meat. Or don't call yourself a carnivore and don't call it a carnivore diet. Down here in lesson 15, so this is the all important, we, we just got to get a transition diet. There's three transition diet lessons. And in this first section, we have a little information. Menus for the first two weeks, but down here again, just to deal with this fats thing. Fats of any kind, including ordinary butter, unnatural, and therefore should not be eaten. However, should you crave fats, it is best to use peanut butter or some other nut butter on your bread. So the way I actually look at avocados is like a natural butter. And so instead of taking some, soaking some nuts and that kind of stuff and making your own nut butter uh, or going to the store and getting one of the natural nut butters in the thing, depending on where you are physiologically, a little avocado butter, just the avocado, you know, if you take like one avocado and you make a dressing out of it or that, that's okay because you got to monitor the elimination. But when you have a bunch of avocados or that's all you're eating in one sitting, yeah, yeah, it's going to, going to be some issues with that. It's, it's not going to work. So, and you know, and if you know me, I could talk about this stuff all day as far as the, the mucus diet healing system book and going through it. But the main point that I wanted to get across with that was first the, the, to, to just deal with and address the raw food, a lot of the raw foodism dogma and how well Eric appropriately addressed the issue that it's like that could just be written, could have been written today because it's not changed. It, the warning has not been heeded. This is about transition, transition diet. And, and in the mucus's diet, you know, that I, I, I have a number of videos on this chair. There's a playlist that goes through all of the transition diet lessons and check those out and you know we got this we got the mucus diet healing system e-course there's a there's a lot of ways to learn about the transition diet but you have to let go one of the reasons that I address the nutritional concepts and make an effort to put pressure on it to say, look, there's, there's a paradigm shift in play here. We, we don't believe like that. We don't think like that. It's not a useful way to think within that nutritional frame. That nutritional framework has, 
has led to this. This, this is where that goes, that, that nutrition concept. You know, the, the 30 bananas a day, as long as you get enough calories, it's okay. As long as you get enough whatever with no thought of elimination, no thought of how much uneliminated fecal matter is being backed up and backed up in the system, acidifying, turning into just toxic, slimy sludge that the body tries to incorporate, tries to deal with to keep you alive. That's not a topic of discussion generally. That's not at the forefront of the discussion. And so as long as you're, you know, because, hey, he, he's getting all kinds of nutrition. He is nutritious. He's got all kinds of, mm, I mean, you just, he's got it. He's getting it all, all the nutrition. He's getting it. Doesn't, it doesn't make sense. I mean, it's not a, it's a terrible theoretical framework that has been exploited by marketers, by medical industry to continue to sell you whatever it is that they want to sell you today. All they have to do is make a nutritional case for it because, and you can make that up about anything. Smoking cigarettes used to be nutritious, <laughs> you know, it used to be, uh, you know, four out of five doctors say that smoking camels is, 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 is great for your health. I should, do, I should do a video on that. Just all the, just all that kind of stuff. So that you understand when they say beef, it's what's for dinner, got milk, all, all of that stuff, where that's coming from marketing because then when people start getting into well you need this and you need that and man we have people in the mucus free community that for one thing never have ever had any supplements i mean that that supplement thing not in folks not into that and have gone years and years in some cases without having whatever it is that you're supposed to have according to the nutritional guidelines. And so, now like I always had to say the disclaimer, this is not medical advice or nutritional, it's not nutritional advice because I don't believe in the nutrition theories as they are. This is art advice. This is about art. The mucus diet healing system practice is an art form. This is about art. There's, it's not a one size fits all. When you want to call something a science, then it better be one size fits all. It better be every situation. There's no deviation. And every time it works the exact same. That doesn't make sense for the human body because everybody's body is di different in terms of you know, size and scale. Everybody's psychology. Where's the mental? I mean, they very rarely would talk about that in terms of, I mean, I guess with Avocado they do, but they're more coming at it from a, uh, like an eating disorder concept. And I'm just, I saw a couple people's videos where they get into that. And I just, I just don't get into that. I mean, pus and mucus eating is a disorder, <laughs> is disordered eating. And so, but it's about transition. It's not about for us. We're not, there's not a pressure. Like I said in a previous video, I am very, uh, uh, you know, I, I like to see people be eager and aggressive with getting into the mentality, getting into and adopting that mucus free mindset and committing to the path. But once you're on the path, find your plateau points, take your time. There's no rush, there's no competition. Don't try to look at what. I'm saying that I did or I'm doing or brother air and say, well, I got, I'm going to try to do that. Or I'm going to fast like brother air, or I'm going to do that. You know, especially when it comes to the food, maybe with mindset, you know, if you want to do something like, cause this was, you know, it, when it's on the, if you want to try to do some of the things we've done on the social level, I mean, good luck. That's hard for most people to, to do what we did in terms of the social part which is one of the reasons that we were so successful. 
But in terms of the actual eating part, there's no pressure for me. And I and because you will relapse. But if you transition properly, the relapse is it, 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 is is incorporated into the transition. It doesn't doesn't harm you. But what some people do, they do a 40-day water fast. They have didn't transition ahead of time. And then when they break, they either break it terribly with one of these meals or they might break it with some fruit or break it with something. Then a couple days later, they're eating one of these meals. That's not at all what Arnold Eric recommends when it's called, it's talk, it's called rational fasting. When he's talking about fasting, that's not what you want to do. Short term. And over time, 24-hour fast, one meal a day plan, fast for two to three days, and then eat mucus-free, eat the transition menus. There's a you know, whole other thing. Colon irrigation, I haven't mentioned that yet. Lemon juice and distilled water enemas. If you want to learn about that, find that video on my channel. Lemon juice and distilled water enemas, very important part of the process. Oh boy! <laughs> just just had to, had to take a take a mukbang break, muk mukbang break. I think that's and he got big with him because that was the skinny guy with him, and I think that's his husband or something. I don't, I don't know. I I didn't. I kind of stayed out of the uh, a lot, so the drama stuff. I didn't. I was like, I don't really want to even get into that that part of it. Let's just deal with whatever's going on here with this food. So the point is, at the end of the day, If you are somebody that's raw foodist or, you know, aspiring fruitarian or anything like that, all I can do is recommend that you read the Mucus's Diet Healing System, have an open mind, and look at the transition diet sections particularly. Look at those menus. Look at how gradual the transition is. When you're new to the Mucus's Diet Healing System, I mean, get this. This is how sophisticated the transition is, but most people miss it. Arnold Eret doesn't recommend that you eat raw fruit for several weeks. You have cooked fruit, stewed or baked fruit, but no raw fruit. When you're starting the mucus's diet, like if you're really going by the book, you wouldn't have any raw fruit for weeks. You transition to it. And how do you get there? Stewed and baked fruit. And oftentimes when I'm working with raw food, that's like the first thing that I recommend. Bake, make some baked banana. Stew some apples. Bake an apple. Bake a peach. Cook something. And that's a good transition for somebody that's, whose body has become overly sensitive because they went raw too quick. The cooked fruit is a, good, is a good way, a good way to deal with that. Now, if I was going to give Mr. Avocado some transitional recommendations, I mean... I could see him doing doing live. Man, this might be rough. I don't know. I give this, put this out there, and he might start doing this, like live, <laughs> live streaming enema, lemon juice enema sessions and stuff. That's you know, but there is a part of me that would really recommend keeping keeping some things private, like you know, when you, if you were to really seriously try to get in the mucus diet and go down that path. There's something to being able to just do it and talk about it later. 
And, you know, as much as I wouldn't mind somebody that had two million follow, you know, followers talking about Duke's diet uh, or doing, a, <laughs> doing something, I still had to recommend to, to, to do it and talk about it later. Because when you start talking about these things, it's, it's like the energy you get, it's, you get weird energies from people, you know, because it's that, that open thing. And I've just found that for me, it's easier to just talk about it later. Just do it. See, because the other thing is, if you're influencing people, it, stuff that I'm experimenting with now, I don't want to talk about that because I'm experimenting. It's kind of like Arnold Eretz, the, the, there's the writings, the, the life issues. There's a, there's a number of writings that haven't been translated to English. One day I might po post some of that up there. We, we've had a few people that actually have translated quite a bit of it to English. But uh, that, those writings are, act, are like literally his notes. In his, it's like a journal of his observations. And there's things in there that you, that you would not want people to read and then go do. So you would have to be a more advanced reader an advanced student of Eric's work to really get the, in my opinion, or you could read that, take some bad, you know, make some bad decisions based on some experiments that he did, not taking that into account that it was uh, experimentation. And so, uh, so that's the key. So if I was to say for him, like, all right, well, first, yeah, <laughs> lemon juice and distilled water enemas, that, stat <laughs> you know that, that that needs to that needs to go down and start bringing in the, the fruits and vegetables again and the salads but I probably wouldn't even recommend raw fruit to him it'd be like he start at the very the very beginning of <laughs> of the transition transition diet you know just just weeks weeks one and two and uh, as they have weeks one and two, lunch, a combination salad consisting of raw grated carrots or coleslaw or both half and half and two or three spoonfuls of stewed or canned vegetables such as green peas, string beans or spinach. Add to this one of the following items, whatever is in season, cucumbers, tomatoes, green onions, lettuce or other green leafy vegetables, celery, etc. But only a sufficient amount for flavoring. You you may use an oil dressing according to your taste of desired, using lemon juice instead of vinegar. It go, goes on and on, but the, oh, the toast, toasted wheat bread, whole wheat bread. But so, so even, even then, you know, you're going to have to eat some quantities, you know, you eat some, some serious quantities, but, you know, it, it can be done. And honestly, there some of the things that I talk about in, in, uh, <laughs> and Spirit Speaks would probably be better because I was coming from, I mean, it, uh, th this dude kind of gives me a run for my money in terms of amount of food. Because I, yeah, I used to think that I was, because I'd sit down, one of my famous meals was at the root beer stand. Where I get two foot longs of chili and cheese, with, and chili and cheese a cheeseburger, a root beer, a root beer float, and popcorn all in one meal and I would do that a couple times a week. So th that meal could it could it could hang, you know, it could hang with with some with some of these uh you know, some of these ones like that. So I've I've eaten I've eaten this amount in one sitting on a regular basis and some of these some of these are a lot or are a little bit more than I would have ate. <laughs> but like I don't know how much of this this if he did he actually eat all of this? All right, okay. He still has some burgers left. I was about to say, I was about to say, that's, come on now, even for him, that's a lot. But, you know, so the point is, there was things that I used for my transition that some people, that a raw foodist would never even consider using. Or a raw vegan, I mean, they would never, ever, ever consider using things that helped me go from something that was more like this 
to be able to practice the diet, to be able to eat fruit in the afternoon, salad in the evening, or like to dive and eat any solid food today, but it's not a big deal. It's, I don't even, it's not, I don't even look, it's not fasting. I'm just, I had some, I had some juice earlier today and I had this juice. I'm not killing over. I'm not tiny. I'm not wasting away. You know, I, I, I might have, have some fruit a little bit later, maybe a salad or something. I don't, who cares? But the point is that I'm on my transition. I'm still on it. You know, my, my McDonald's thing was uh, I would get a, a Big Mac with the, like the Big Mac meal with the big fries and the big drink. So Big Mac with an orange drink, fries, and I get nine piece chicken McNugget and a fish filet with extra tartar sauce. And that was my McDonald's meal. You know, you, you got to throw in a, an apple pie for good measure. So I'd throw an apple pie in there. Oh, and I, I almost forgot the hot fudge sundae. So that was my, whenever I went to McDonald's, that was pretty much, I, I would order all that food. Big man, <laughs> that's a lot now I think. Yeah, I, I could have been a mukbanger, man. You know, I'd have, I, I wouldn't, if I hadn't changed my diet, I truly don't think I'd be here. I'd either be about 400 pounds or I probably would have had a stroke already. You know, I, I wouldn't. I really don't think I would have got to the age that I'm at now because I was, my body couldn't handle it. I was too sensitive to keep going down that road. But yeah, then what about uh, Burger? My Burger King meal was uh, was the Whopper, double well always bake the double bacon Whopper and fries. I like the they had these little chocolate pies. Get that. Shake, which didn't make any sense because the shakes were terrible. I still got it. Uh, There's a couple other things, but I, I forget. But, I mean, I could give you that list, and that's the thing. There's a lot of people that can't relate to that that are in the raw vegan thing because they weren't that unhealthy. They didn't eat that bad before. So I'm like the exact opposite of this dude where he started off, because I would imagine before he even went raw vegan, he wasn't big. I, I Maybe he was, but I don't think he was. I think he was just probably regular dude. Then he got into the raw vegan. And, you know, and you saw how skinny he was earlier on. And, but then, you know, then this happened because there was lack of transition. Whereas for me, I was the exact opposite. Where I was coming from eating somewhat like this, <laughs> you know, pretty kind of somewhat like, you know, just th these. I could hang because I also think some of these images are like how much of this did he eat? See, he's not finishing all these meals. He's putting some of this stuff back in the. Hold on. He's not even finishing all this. He's putting some of this stuff back in the refrigerator. What's that about? I thought you were supposed to finish it. So they, so they fooled me. He's fooling me. He's not even eating all of it. I mean, he's eating enough of it. But, so I don't know. So maybe what I would, if I, I could have mukbanged with, what I, with the amount that I ate. Because I did eat. I did eat this much. I wasn't a big, he's insane with these noodles. I wasn't into that noodle thing. But, um. So <laughs> anyway, so and I share that also to, you know, let, let, let y'all know I'm, I know about this because I come from this in terms that this level of terrible eating, the that gluttony overeating. I know all about it. And if it wasn't for the transition methodology and the mucusless diet healing system, I would not have went plant-based or vegan or any of those words you want to use, it wouldn't have happened. Because the way that 
raw foodists, most raw foodists come to the table talking about raw foodism, I would have never gotten into it like that. It just wouldn't have happened. I never would have gotten into it doing it the way that it's presented. I would have just been like, what? You No cooked food? No, it would have made no sense. That wouldn't have resonated at all. I'd have moved on. What was different about the mucus of diet, I met Brother Air. He told me he ate nothing but fruit for an entire year. So even though that sounds extreme to somebody that has never heard of something like that, he was able to back it up with a methodology that made sense, saying he did that on year 20. 20 years of practicing the mucus's diet, and then he went a full year eating nothing but fruit. Not being raw for six months and then trying to eat nothing but fruit for a year. Practiced the transition diet for 20 years and then ate nothing but fruit for one year. It's a total different paradigm. And it's missing in the large majority of the raw food community. Now, I would love to see raw foodists embrace the mucus's diet and, and just kind of say like, okay, we're going to be rational now where it's, it's okay. If you want to be raw and you want to be raw and mucus free, um, I'll be your cheerleader. But if you're not, if you, if you don't respect the transition part of it, then I know it's going to happen. It is not going to be pretty. Because over and over and over again, the same thing keeps happening. So what I try to do is say, it's okay to eat things that are transitional. Don't be guilty. Don't be hard on yourself. Even if you have a relapse and you go back to some other crap, be gentle with yourself. Be loving with yourself. Not hard on you. You don't have to be hard on yourself for that. And this is, I think, again, where I, it gets misconstrued with me because I'm hardcore on the mentality stuff, probably too hardcore for some people. When it comes to moving mentally and it, like I, I'll, I push fast, like I, I probably push too fast for some people because I want that part to transform as soon as possible. But the physical part, that let that go through its process. Or, again, you, you end up in, in this, 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 this land of, uh, is it, was that a breakup video? I get this, I don't know, these, these, this dude might plan this stuff out and write these scripts. But, uh, so, you know, so the point is, it's okay to transition. It's okay to deal with various things it, within the context. Once you understand the principles, then you, know, you can do it. And like I said, it's, it is, you know, it's good to avoid, avoid this. You know, don't, don't go down this path. She's got a shirt and she's smoking a cigarette. She got the uh, okay. <laughs> oh man. All right, so I'm uh, we're gonna take a real quick break. Then I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna check the comment section because I haven't looked in there <laughs> to see what you guys are talking about. There's I'll interact a little bit. You got some questions or something like that. We'll have a little uh, little session. Then we'll close this one out, but I hope uh, this has been helpful. If you do have questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments, and I'll address some of them if, if they go with what we're, what we're dealing with here. But, uh, but all right, so check this out. A very important message, very important message from our sponsors. Do you ever wake up in the morning feeling bad? I mean really bad? Blowing your nose and coughing up green slime bad? 
What if I told you that the foods you eat are causing mucus to back up in your body? The good news is this waste can be eliminated naturally. Discover the simplest and most powerful natural lifestyle secret that has improved the lives of thousands. Professor Arnold Eretz's Mucusless Diet Healing System, annotated, revised, and edited by Professor Spira, is a complete course for those who desire to take their health into their own hands. You will learn how to naturally get rid of that annoying stuffy nose, soothe your nasty cough, melt away unwanted body fat, prevent dangerous health issues, and heal yourself of painful illnesses. Where are my real brothers and sisters at? You think you're hard? You think you're a revolutionary? Then you got to be talking about health. Learning to control what you put into your mouth is the most revolutionary thing you can do. Check out the book that inspired Dr. Sebi, Lila Africa, and many others. Visit www.mucusfreelife.com forward slash revised dash mucusless dash diet to get your copy today while supplies last. All right, welcome back. <laughs> and so, uh, all right, we got the chat up here. Well, I appreciate everybody tuning in. What's going on, Josh? What's going on, Sophie? What's going on, Vincent? And uh, Vincent says, squash in the oven, tomato sauce warming, salad mode. That sounds good. Seeing those old foods still play with my mind a little bit. Yeah, yeah, it takes a while to get to that point where it just don't even respond or react to to those foods you know it takes a minute but the, the squash that's like a magical transition tool man people sleep on that when you get into the acorn baked acorn squash baked spaghetti squash with, with a little tomato sauce a big salad toasted you know the toasted wheat bread I mean, you ain't hungry after eating all that, you know, because I don't care where you came from. You know, these are transitional meals that people can get into to be able to sustain the diet. Because as you go through the process, you will continue to, you'll get to a point where you no longer want to eat that much and eat those things. Because I haven't had, I mean, as much as I like the baked squash, I haven't had it been a long time now that I think about it and I used to have those all the time but it's been a long time since I've eaten that because I keep I because I, I also don't get too attached to anything that I'm into I just keep on moving just when my body's ready to move when my mind and my body's ready to move on we just just keep it keep it on moving what's going on Kathleen Michael James Josh it's all about transition. That's right, James. Sophie says it can play with your mind, biology, ego, parasites. I guess that's parasites. But once you eat it, you probably realize you don't even like it anymore. Yeah, that's that's the thing with the addiction. And you know, I have a whole series where I talk about addiction to pus and mucus forming foods. And again, it's a different paradigm. We're looking at these things that they cause a great deal of addiction. And that's why, you, you, you know, you got to take, take it slow and be gentle with yourself getting off of it. And uh, oh, thank you, everybody, for typing in the transition, getting, getting that rolling. Sophie says, eventually your physiology naturally adapts to your addictions, changing and nourishment, soul reclamation. Yeah, peep, we have, as a species, we've just transitioned in the wrong direction to a point where we can sustain eating the way that we can for as long as we can. And, and, and really, it's who knows how long. I mean, the, the time is going to get short. Like I said, the Nicocado Avocado had... He's, he's got to be younger than me. I mean, I don't know what his age is. or was he, uh, I think I saw his Wikipedia. Was he born in, not in the 90s, early 90s? I mean, he's in his late 20s or something. And he's already had a heart attack? 
you know. I mean, that's, <laughs> I mean, that's really, it's like, okay. I mean, that's like the question. You could be famous and a millionaire, but you have to have heart attacks and you're probably going, and you might pass away at a very young age in your 30s. Or nobody could know who you are and you transition yourself to a point where you, your body doesn't have pain, it's impossible for you to have a heart attack, and you can live, you know, the older you get, people say, oh, wow, you don't look that old. You know, I mean, that's a choice. Some people choose they would rather have the money and the fame and die young than to not have any of that and just live a calm and peaceful life. You know, that pus and mucus drive makes people want to have that that chaos in their life. They would they it's really messes with your decisions. And that's that shows you how right there how terrible the decisions, you know, the decision making process is when you start to get really taken over by the pus and the mucus eating. And uh let's, let's get going down here. <laughs> people probably reacting what's going on dun, 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 dun. let's see does anyone else have emotional detox after lemon enema mm. yeah I know what you're talking about yeah sometimes I do you, you have that lemon juice to distilled water enema then you know it's like stuff starts coming up there's a limit that emotional elimination you sitting there just start getting emotional, you know, shed a couple tears, and it's like that old ancient stuff is coming out. The emotional, that old emotional grime is coming on out. Anthony said, used to dip the apple pie in the caramel sundae. There you go. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, that's how you do it. Uh, I XL those <laughs> said I used to eat like that. And uh, Sophie says she never ate that bad. That that's good. That is good because let's see, Sham said, can mucoid plaque stunt your growth if you have it from from being young, eating chips and all? If so, can you regain your height after getting mucoid plaque out? Thank you. I mean, there's a lot of things that are possible when you start to clean yourself up. I mean, I can't say for sure in this particular case. I can talk for myself. I mean, I had a number of things change in terms of my bone structure. I used to be flat-footed, my feet, with, you know, I used to have real pain. I mean, you're, I was in third grade having trouble walking because I was starting to get so heavy that was, and my feet were like flat, my arches, we're in pain. I used to go to a podiatrist. I don't even talk about that. I mean, I had such a list of problems. I don't even talk about that because some things get so ingrained that you don't even think about it. But I used to go to the foot doctor and I used foot appliances for years. And foot appliances are basically these pieces of plastic that you put in your shoe and it, and it forces your, uh, your arch up. And I hated, I hated that I had to wear those. But if I didn't, it would be excruciating to walk because my arches hurt so bad. And when I started practicing the diet, I was so addicted to the, I didn't even think about trying to no longer use them in the early years of practicing the diet. So I kept wearing them and, I, and my feet and everything, my whole body, everything totally changed but I was still wearing these stupid foot appliances and it ended up messing me up later and I had, it was messing with my knees and this kind of stuff. So I ended up doing some in intensive fasting. I stopped, I stopped wearing the foot appliances. I was doing some, uh, some various exercises that would be considered like physical therapy kind of exercise. I actually like, I like a lot of the stuff they do in physical therapy, it's very gentle, core strengthening is some there's some stuff in there to, to study 
but I did that and you know I got my knees got all, all that stuff healed it was all got back together and I know and I stopped wearing the foot appliances I was able to now I could have done that years ahead but that shows you I was so addicted to that you know that I just didn't even didn't even think about it I just kept on rolling with it but yeah Let's see. Taylor says, you promote a vegan diet, question mark. I promote the mucusless diet healing system by Professor Arnold Eric. And the mucusless diet healing system is the original vegan diet, or it's a transitional methodology for to a animal-free diet. It's also the original plant-based diet or a transitional methodology to get to having a plant-based diet. But that's what I promote, Mucus's Diet Healing System by Professor Arnold Eret, because everything is in there. Raw foodism, fruitarianism, fasting, vegetarianism, all of that is within the context of the Mucus's Diet Healing System. There's nothing else more dynamic than this. Not, you will not find any diet more dynamic with such a range. And people miss that when they come into it with the preconceived notions of what they think it's supposed to be. If they're reading it thinking it's going to be all fruit, then that's the book they read. It's like they almost bring to it and impose their belief on the book. When if you take the whole thing in, and there's a reason why people in the community read the book over and over and over again. Because every time you read it, you get new insights, new information. Different things pop out at you. Aha moments pop up. Like every time is different. And so, yeah, so I promote the mucusless diet healing system by Professor Arnold Eric. And Taylor said, I don't know what to believe anymore. I have family members that eat meat. And our unhealthy veganism didn't work with my body, though. So that's why I'm saying this is different, but you got to read it. This is a different approach, a different paradigm. We're not dealing with all these nutritional theories. We're dealing with actionable information that produces results. That if you apply the principles, then something's going to happen. But and in the beginning, like put it like this, I used cottage cheese for maybe the first six, up to the first six months, six or something months of practicing the mucus's diet. That's something that's mentioned in here as a transitional tool. It's not something that you're supposed to eat for the rest of your life on a regular basis. But there are some vegetarian tools, some non-plant-based tools that are recommended and in there for people that need them. It's a dy it's dynamic. It's dynamic. You where you can go from like I said some of the, the worst kinds of eating that you can imagine and you can use these principles to get into higher levels of fasting, to high, high levels of the fruit the raw foodisms. It's kind of things and everything in between. But people don't like the in-between, and that's where I like to be at. I live there because that's where the work is done, is in the middle. Learning how to really navigate those waters. That's where a lot of work gets done. Let's see, here's a question. What are your thoughts on Gabriel Cousins' claim that eating a, a fruit-based diet creates pathogenic response? and thus produces uh, mycotoxins in the blood. My thoughts are I don't agree. <laughs> I don't agree with, uh, with Mr. Cousins on that one. And you know he was one of the first raw foodists that I was really exposed to was I met somebody that, would, that had studied with him, had taken his course at his ranch down in wherever they're at in Arizona or New Mexico or something. And she went down there 
and, and came back. And the thing that I really loved about their methodology had nothing to do with diet. I liked that he was getting a lot of his, the people that he trained to go back to their communities and to create meetups, like raw food meetups, but that would attract people that weren't raw foodists. It was just kind of like take an outstretched hand saying, hey, we're having some free food. Come and hang with us. And she used to have these the little raw food meetups. And I thought that was really cool. Like, I like that. I, I respect that and appreciate that approach because it, it's taking action. It's not waiting around to like, oh, let's see if what happens. It's like, no, it's, you, you learn the ideas and the information and go out there and create something. Invite people into your world. Give them a chance to experience it. You know, try it on for size. So I really appreciate that with uh, Gabriel Cousins. Uh, but when it comes to, you know, the, the theories on fruit and the detoxification, we're, we're going to have some differences of, of opinion on those kind of things. We are kind of a non-supplement type of mentality. Most of us don't use uh, supplementation. A lot of us don't really get into the herbs and, and it's not like required. With some of these groups, it's required that you better have a couple grand ready to buy all this stuff. With us, it's like, I mean, you can get a, a $15 book, but you just got to go to the store and just start stocking up on produce and combining it the right way and, uh, you know, get a $20 enema bag, something like, you know, there's, it's, it's a different you know, it's like I'd rather see people instead of getting a, you know, three hundred dollar order of supplements and all this kind of stuff. Just put that three hundred dollars aside. Get boxes of lemons, for or limes if you hate you know, if you're scared of lemons and whatever. Get you to do your enemas or get boxes of stuff to juice. Get boxes of apples and oranges or you know and, and get into your juicing. I mean, that's the kind of mentality. But, but yeah, as far as that goes, yeah, the fruit. Now, I, we, the, dif the difference here is that I'm an advocate of, tra of long-term transition. So I'm not pushing people to get into a fruit diet quickly. As you go along on your path, you may have periods of time where you eat nothing but fruit, but that's going to be within the context of a larger transition. And so once you start to get into that, because I don't advocate for fruit only diets, like that you have to rush into that and eat because humans were designed to be fruit eaters that we have to get to that very quickly. Uh, or, and most people won't get it in one lifetime. Now, where I'm different is I'm interested in the generational effect of transition. So even if you practice an average baseline transition, but you have some children, if you've cleaned yourself up, your children are, you actually have children cleaner than you. Today, that never, that very rarely happens. Most people have children that are degenerated physiologically and cleanliness wise are, are a rung under their parents. What you can, what we are can do on this path, start to transition, clean yourself up. You have some children, and bring them up on the mucus's diet. Now you are transforming humanity. People want to try to transform things themselves, like they're just, I'm going to be a fruitarian, and who cares what you're doing? I want to know, did you clean yourself up, have children, and then? What, and then I'm interested in their children because that's when we can start to talk about hu uh, the human species that, know, that does not know what disease is. But we're not going to do that in our generation or the next generation. Two to three generations, we can have that conversation. We can have the conversation about disease is a thing of the past. It's been worked out of the human genes, 
It's been worked out, but it's going to take some generations. And so, and I know this is very forward thinking. It's very visionary, but I like to see people try and think like that. Try to absorb and think beyond yourself. It ain't about you. What can you do? And I know not everybody's going to have children and they're not, you know, be in that kind of situation, but that's it's not the point. You know, the point is thinking like that, that long-term type of mentality in terms of actually putting humanity back together. Make humans human again. Trade, I'm going to trademark that. And I'll see what I'm <laughs> And I'm going to put that on a hat, you know, make, make humans human again. Talking about wh- whatever degenerate thing we are, it's not that, you know, it's we were this little subspecies of, of human and homo sapien transition into homo spiritus. But you can't do that in one or two generations. And, and that is where, that excites me to just, just because I can see it, that vision, I can see it so clearly when you have a, large groups of people start having children that then have children and, they're, and, and you're like first generation, because we're, we're all, I mean, we, we're, we're muck banging, we, we've eaten McDonald's, we, <laughs> you're like, look at where we're coming from, man. You want to get it to where your grandchildren can't even relate to, to what you're talking about. You have to create new myths with new and characters to even try to explain what, we're talk, what we've talked about today. Like it just wouldn't even register. And that is very possible. But people have to have patience. People have to dedicate. Like that's real dedication. And you know, that's something I always respect with Brother Ayers. He dedicated his family. Like he's putting his family together around the mucus's diet and, and raising children that are practicing the mucus's diet. And, and that's how you put the world back together, you know, and really transform the world. Let's see. Did I see something? Was Taylor talking about the paleo? Uh, oh, Sophie just said stay stay away from paleo. Yeah, I would stay away from. They it's like they change the name of it every several years. Of it's basically a similar, and they'll try to change the theory behind it. But it's like you know Atkins diet, then paleo, then keto, then carnivore, and they just it's all it's all bad, all that stuff. It's just all, this is bad news stuff there. Someone's bringing up the syringe. That's how I say it. What was Sverge? Whatever. Um, what do you think about him uh, and his diet? I think constipation and pain is what I think about that. And, and, and premature aging is... Uh, Premature aging and no transition at all is what I think of that. And, uh, you know, I saw that video where he went to a vegan, uh, some a vegan event, and he's, like, walking around with a handful of meat or something, eating it in front of all these, like, you know, vegans. Like, his, his little carnivore protest, he's like, rah, rah, mm, vegans, rah, you know, it's like, you know. Yeah, it is what it is. I mean, there's there's gonna be there's always those those folks out there. I mean, it's it, it's it's gonna be what it's gonna be. Uh, Taylor said he might have a digestive disorder. Just say, man, check out the mucus diet healing system. Investigate enemas. Uh, you know, it's about putting yourself back together. We have messed ourselves up because we've eaten in a way that is divorced from nature. So we have to pay reparations. It's not always going to be fun. 
It's not always going to feel good or be easy, but it's the work that we have to do. See, Mr. Nah, urine is cellular waste. If you drink the waste, where does it go? Yeah, that's, that's good. That's, yeah, that's another, I don't even want to talk about, <laughs> uh, you know. Brother Air, what's going on, Brother Air? Damn, he's a, damn it, it's dynamic. It's dynamic, you know. It's dynamic. Mutants has died healing system. Let's see. I thought I saw something about Dr. Morris on here. Let's see. Oh, somebody had recommended check out Dr. Moore. Yeah. So the name of the game for me is transition. That's what's missing in the communities of the raw food communities, the fruitarian communities, the vegan communities, the paleo community, the keto, all of them, all of the communities, they don't understand transition. They don't understand mucuslessness and the benefits of being mucus free. I mean, I used to have chronic migraine headaches almost every day, chronic ear, no, nose, and throat issues, the uh, terrible body odor. I already just mentioned my flat footedness and intense pain. Like a 13, 14 year old, you're not supposed to have, your arches aren't supposed to feel like the way, you know, someone in their 80s, like walking around, like, I mean, and even that's not, you're not supposed to walk like that in the 80s, but uh, definitely not supposed to be walking around like that when you're 13 years old. And, I mean, who enjoys hemorrhoids? I didn't, but I had them all the time. But all of a sudden, something miraculous happened. They all went away. Why? I changed my diet. I transitioned away from pus and mucus forming foods to a diet rich in fruits and vegetables and transitional. The mucus, because I did eat mucus and I, I do have stuff that's still mucus forming. But the way I combine it, the amount of it, just transition on, on, on. Transition on off of it. Like I said, a lot of stuff that I ate in the early years, I don't eat anymore. And you just continue to refine. You refine as far as you want to go, as much as you want to go. But it's an art form. And you got to understand that dynamic. You know, the art form dynamic. That this is all about transformation. Transforming your physiology over time. You know, that's what you want to do. So this has been a lot of fun. I want to thank you all for tuning in. And, you know, I really do wish the, uh, the young man well, Mr. Mr. Avocado. Uh, you know, I hope we can get it together. He's got a lot of, he's got a lot of work to do. And... It's, uh, it's, it's deep, but this is kind of a microcosm of what's going on. And as I said, ex-vegan eats burger for the first time in 10 years. So this was, I guess, when he went to, it's just so weird. You just do videos of yourself just eating. Man. I don't know, does, it, does this count? We gotta, I'm gonna finish the mukbang. Water, distilled water. <sighs> Was that mukbangy? Was that mukbangy enough? I just drank some juice earlier and some water. It's mucus free mukbang. That's weird. I'm going to laugh if I just started something with that and all of a sudden people start doing mucus-free mukbang videos where they, they just eat what they would be eating on 
film and they just say, oh, baked banana surprise, and they're just having a conversation. I mean, what do people even talk about? I just feel so good. So, 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 so good. I'm, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad you, you feel good, but that heart attack didn't feel good, according to you. And that's the thing. You got to make that connection. You got to make, you got to make the connection between that initial stimulation of oh this oh I'm gorging myself you know I feel good and it's not really feeling good you're just getting high getting stimulated getting all you know, hit up with this mucus so you can do that but you got to pay the consequences on the other side of that. So, you know, the, the, the choice is yours, but, but yeah, I, I do hope the dude gets himself together. What is it? Oh, <laughs> it was that redneck beat, beat fried chicken. You know, so I hope he gets himself together and, you know, it's one of those things that, uh, you know, we, you know, we have the information and... I really would advise that he don't go back to trying to do 30 bananas a day or trying to eat nothing but fruit or doing some kind of fast because that sounds like what way he's thinking. Now he's thinking about doing some type of fast. Like, like he wants to just, in his head, like he could just lose a bunch of weight, just not eat anything, and I would not recommend that he fast. I mean, I just, not now, not, I recommend that he transitions and he finds foods that are not as bad as the foods that he's been used to eating. And, and another even point to make with all this is another reason that this happens like this is where if you raw, you raw vegan for however long he was, like a couple years or something, as I've also seen it with other people, the relapse it's so insane. And that's what it's like. You, we literally have three YouTube channels of, of a raw vegan relapse. He could, you could rename this raw vegan relapse. What ha, and, and subtitle, what happens when you don't transition? No one would, you know, it's like no one told you to eat six avocados in one sitting. There's a reason why you didn't feel good. Don't blame it, you know, the, he wanted to blame veganism or plant-based eating on the, what he was feeling, where he was going through whatever he was going through. But, I mean, when you don't transition, you open yourself up to a lot of issues, you know, a lot of pain, a lot of, a lot of problems. And so my, my hope for him is that he learns about the transition and will give it a shot. But you know, you know, it is what it is. So I want to... Uh, thank you all for tuning in. This has been this has been fun. And again, if you're new here, if you've never signed up for the Mucus Free Life Insiders Club, go down below, click the link, get five free recipes to help you remove mucus from your body. You want the Brother Air salad recipe. Combination salads are key. Mucus broom, broom this stuff out of your body. And do so in a way where you're still satisfied, you're still satiated. This is not a, a pain. This isn't supposed to be like a pain, you know, being real stoic and, um, oh, you know, kind of thing. This is supposed to be a gentle therapeutic process. But you've got to invest that time. And again, the main thing that I see with a lot of folks that are raw food is, is, is letting go of that dogma and opening your mind up 
letting go of nutritional dogma, letting go of the raw dogma, letting go of that stuff to be pragmatic. The mucus's diet healing system is the most pragmatic of all of the plant-based diets or healing systems or lifestyles. It's pragmatic. It's not one size fits all. It's going to be different for each person. The principles are the same for everybody, but the practice will be different for each person. That's why it's an art form. It's a whole, whole different kind of thing. And when you, if you do read the Mucus Diet, then you want to understand that you don't have to agree with all of Eric's philosophies. You don't, to, in order to practice the mechanics, when I first read the book, I didn't believe everything in there. It was interesting philosophy, some of it, but I didn't believe everything. But I started taking action and practicing the principles of the system. And what ended up happening, the more I practiced, the longer I practiced, things that he said that I thought was kind of, at first, on first reading, that I thought was like, well, that can't be true, ended up being true. And so things unfold. This process unfolds over time. This isn't a quick fix. This is something that unfolds and you have to allow the unfolding and not get in its way, not tr trying to hold on to old concepts and hold on to you know, the, these old outdated nutrition theories. Like we're still on that. Come on. You know, it's like we're, we're, that we're still there with all this chaos, all the more and more people, more people today than in any point in history have no clue what to eat and how to eat. Yet people want to say we're, we have the most sophisticated understanding of nutrition ever. But we have the worst eating in the history of humanity. So all, this new, all these nutrition theories aren't helping any, but anything. When it, you know, it's, so pragmatic, a pragmatic approach, transition from wherever you're at, no matter how bad your diet is or good you think your diet is, transition methodology can help you transform your situation and take you to that next level. Whatever that level is for you, I mean, take you there. Let's see, brother, brother Air chiming, chiming in. Says, people don't want to admit how filthy they are. It's hard to be honest with yourself. Mucus and pus is a hard fight. Yeah, and we always say that. You know, we never try to come to you talking about this is just gonna be an easy walk in the park. This is the real deal. You know, this is a lot of work to be done, but I would rather do this work because I've seen the kind of work that it takes when you have a double bypass surgery like my mom had. I see the kind of sacrifice that's made when both legs are amputated like my mom had. So sacrifice, I've been to the hospices in the old folks' home and the hospitals. Take a field trip. Go, go spend some time. If you think you're so, do a community service project and go volunteer at some old folks' homes or a hospice or, and, these, and, and examine. Take notes. Look at what they're eating look at their physical condition and put, put it together and spread some love and, and you know, be, be there, do you know, that. But the observation side, you got to make that connection. Is that the future that you want? Because that's not the future that other cultures of people have had. This hospice lifestyle, that, that, this is not... Just because you're older doesn't mean that you're supposed to be in a wheelchair 
and live the last 15 to 20 years of your life in pain. That's not a rule. And the kinds of illnesses that we have now and that type of painful exiting, that's not, that's, that's, that's new, <laughs> you know, in terms of the legacy of humanity. That's new. Now, I don't want to try to get into one of these historic, the history debates where people start, well, we're in better shape than we ever were in hit no. That's Eurocentric European bait. It's like going, all, all you did was just, you went back to Greece. Ancient Greece, which was brand new compared to ancient Egypt, which is brand new compared to Ethiopia. And then we go back even further in places that might be covered over by water. We don't know. We know a very little about the real history of humanity. Going back huge, huge gaps. And so this thing is, it doesn't have to be like this. We don't have to go through that type of pain and suffering. But you got to have that. You got to understand all that. You got to make that choice that is what is more important to you. Would you rather be able to live a bit longer with less pain and eat more fruits and vegetables now and, and stay away from the Big Macs and the hot fudge sundae? Or do you want to indulge and you don't care? And when the, but the thing is, when the pain gets here, don't be, don't be mad about it. Don't say, I don't know what happened or this is, you know, don't just take responsibility that was one of my early missions when i went with the mucus's diet was i i had almost given up on even trying to get people into the diet like this was early on when i was going out that was like the standing on the street corner professing arnold you know that was those days and after getting beat up not not literally but figuratively uh, and just people just have no interest in any of that. I was just like, okay, you know what? I'm just going to ruin a lot of people's day by exposing them to information that they need. But, you know, so I, so I just made it a point that, uh, you know, I'm talking to people, I slipped that mucus's diet in there so slick and they are just, it just start their mind reeling. Because once you're exposed to it, everything changes. Once you're exposed to the mucus's diet and the potentials and the vision and the possibilities, then we don't, the, the excuses are gone. And that's what people don't like it. Because the, the excuse, as long as you can say, I don't know what it was, or it was genetic, or blame everything but the diet, as long as you have enough information to do that, to be able to remain ignorant like that, then it's easier for a lot of people. But as soon as you know this and you like, wait, there's a different way to think about all this. There's a different way to live and be, you know, it changes the game. And so we have work to do. We have a lot of work to do. And let's see, I, I, it looks like a couple new questions. We'll, we will uh, go ahead and address these. Let's see. It was an enema. How, how warm is the enema water? Should it be on the warmer side? I like to have it on the warmer side, personally, and I know Brother Air does too. But I always test it with my finger when I'm heating it up and I just put my finger in and I know how warm it is, but it should be about like taking a shower or you, know, you don't want it to burn you. You know, you don't want to put your finger in and it's, and it burns, but you want it warm enough where it's definitely got a good warmth because that helps with, uh, really that, uh, that elimination process, you know, that, that warmth, uh, cause, causes a better elimination. <clears throat> Let's see. 
he was asking about the bag bucket not too high above the body so the pressure of the incoming water does not irritate the sigmoid colon right away. So that just, that just depends on where you're at because with me, I like that pressure. And so I squeeze the bag and I, I get a full bag of, of the lemon juice enema water into my colon within 20 seconds or, you know, just cause I, 20, 30 seconds because I, I squeeze it and it doesn't irritate me unless, if, yeah, if, I, if the water's too hot, it's going to irritate. But, so don't make it too hot. But, but that, that pressure, I don't have a problem with that. But of course, I've transitioned into that. I didn't do that on day one. Uh, you know, in the early days, yeah, I just had, had just kind of have it really actually go in fairly slow in the early days, have a little go in and just kind of have it in one hand and raise the bag, lower the bag, raise it, and just kind of have the water going in slow. But, uh, but yeah, no, now I'm just, <laughs> you know, it's, I, I like that pressure. And I actually, I haven't used it in a while, but I had the only gallon bag that I'd ever seen. I wish I'd have bought like several of them because they, it's, you can't find anything like that anymore. But it was a, just a traditional enema bag that was a, a full gallon. And, uh, and I did a lot of enemas like that with a full gallon <laughs> of, the, of the water in there. And, but let's see. Oh, is oh, is, oh, she wasn't asking me. She was uh, responding to look. Maybe she's responding to somebody. But uh, but yeah, but that's my two cents on it. But yeah, I mean you're right. You, if people are having it too warm, yeah, you, you don't want it to be too warm. And if you're getting started, what Aranka said is correct as far as uh, letting it you know, letting the water in gently and slowly until you're used to it. Once you're used to it, then it's it's on. And uh, yeah, and relax, definitely relax and chill. Most definitely, and say, and put on some good YouTube talks, <laughs> some Spira and, uh, and, and Illatom. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah. So that is the good word for today. So I thank you all so much for tuning in. Again, go down below, click that link if you're interested in really learning this stuff. We got Mucus's Diet Healing System e-course. Take you by the hand and go through every one of these lessons over the span of eight weeks. It's a two, two month long course and it's the most comprehensive course and analysis, a college level course on the Mucus's Diet Healing System. And I highly recommend it. if you're really serious about this information, taking things to the next level, and I highly recommend considering investing in the Mucus Diet Healing System e-course and just kind of skip over all of the, you know, because, yeah, you can try to find a lot of information all over the stuff, and we got hours and hours and hours of great content on this channel on the Mucus Diet Healing System, but there's nothing like going through a course that's just nailing every lesson and just where you can really absorb the information. I'm really into the art of retention of information. What is the best way to retain the information? And I brought that into how I designed the course because I understand different people learn differently where some people are very visual learners. And so we have, uh, there's a lot of visual elements to the course. Some people are audio learners. So there's the audio component. Some people need to write things down to remember. So that, that's, we, we have the quizzes in there to recall what was taught in the lesson. So it's comprehensive. And uh, so I definitely, uh, definitely recommend that uh, invest the, the, the time and check that out. Because I think if you're serious about this path, it can really, really help you out a lot. So... This has been a lot of fun hanging out with you guys. And uh, definitely subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. And 
so you know what we're listening to. This is the uh, Chicken Hawk Burgetters is a band that I was in or we, we, <laughs> we got into a thing where we pretty much play once a year. But, uh, but anyway, take your health seriously. You, you know, take your practice to the next level. Because there's so many great things that happen when you start cleaning yourself up, where it's not just about the things that are pain that are painful or that kind of stuff. You, your creativity is off the chain. You know, you start moving through the world lighter and more freely. You know, the freedom just feels better. So <laughs> I always do that. You know, right? There's always a little bit more to say, but it, it is. Because I'm excited about this. You know, I'm always happy to talk about the Mucus's Diet and to share this information with more people. And uh, as I've seen the benefits, I've seen how it's just transformed people's lives. So until next time, peace, love, and breath.